Sometimes you give a little Mexican judo, as in you don't know who you're messing with, Holmes. This week on At the Movies with Ebert and Roper, from the people that brought you super bad and knocked up, it's Owen Wilson and Drill Bit Taylor. Just start standing up for yourself. We're not with Dad anymore. Charlie's Theron and Dennis Hopper are sleepwalking. I've been married uh, approximately 74 times. Woody Harrelson and Ray Romano in the poker movie The Grand. Plus, he's dancing with the stars and dancing in the ring. It's Adam Carolla in The Hammer. We're in Burbank, Grasshopper. <laughs> and I got enough cheese for the whole valley. Oh, yeah? As a bodyguard, I've protected three vice presidents, Bobby Brown and Sylvester Stallone. Not quite as tough as he looks. Who do you guys need protection from? Just a high school bully. Help me. Owen Wilson is the commander of the Geek Squad in Drill Bit Taylor. I'm Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Richard Roper. Drill Bit Taylor could have been titled Super Bad Freshman Year. Three young actors with the same basic physiques and personalities of Seth, Evan, and McLovin from Superbad embark on their high school careers with disastrous results. Nate Hartley is the beanpole Wade. Troy Gentile is the beefy Ryan. Not only do they show up for day one at school wearing the same fanboy bowling shirts, they're immediately targeted by two sadistic bullies. This is one of those movie high schools where security and administrators are practically invisible and always clueless. Gotta say something. I got to. I have to. Say something. It's hilarious. The kid fits in the locker. Come on. It's not funny. This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Stop! David Dorfman completes the trio as the hobbit-sized Emmett. The boys go to the internet to hire a bodyguard slash fight coach. He's the mysterious army vet Drill Bit Taylor, played by Owen Wilson. But first, I'm going to need some supplies. I want to go in and get... Like nunchucks? Maybe. But a lot of stuff I'll just get from just what's laying around the house. You'd be surprised. Anything can be turned into a weapon of mayhem or destruction. Even a puppy? Especially a puppy. Okay, Wilson's funny here, but we've seen him play this guy many, many times before. The film ventures into pure sitcom cartoon mode when Drillbit masquerades as a substitute teacher and nobody at the school even blinks. You know French? A little bit. Yeah, mm. enough to get by or enough to teach these animals. <laughs> what do you teach? English. My native tongue. At first, Drillbit is just looking to con the boys and loot their houses, but you think he might grow to care about the little rascals? Hmm, I wonder. You know what this is? It's a wing. You're under it. All three of you, right there. It's very disturbing. If the clips that we've shown you remind you of a 21st century John Hughes film, well, they should. The iconic 80s filmmaker actually dreamed up the idea for Drillbit Taylor. Seth Rogen is the co-writer of the finished screenplay. Judd Apatow is a producer here. I did laugh hard at some of the one-liners. I like the kids, but the constant fighting and punching gets nastier and less funny. The film drags on for far too long, and the ending is uninspired and predictable. So I'm saying skip this one, Michael. Yeah, I'm right with you on this, because it, there's something about the tone of this is way off. And you'd think yeah, that right, you know, this, right. bullying just isn't what it used to be, you know, the good old days of bullying, you know. But it, there's something wrong with the tone of all the physical violence in the fights, and it's it's really much closer to Fight Club than anything that John Hughes did. <laughs> well, I and don't it know. Makes, I, it just doesn't. It does not yeah. get you in a laughing mood. There, there, there were some moments, you know, I laughed out loud. Some pretty good one-liners, but wildly uneven yeah, so you have yeah. you know, I like the relationship between the three kids and they actually looked like three high school freshmen much like the kids in Superbad looked like real high school seniors right. so there was some authenticity there sweet little romance uh, with the one uh, real skinny kid and the, and, the, and the young freshman girl that was kind of interesting but then you have this kid who's he's not just the bully he's a serial felon no he's Columbine bully you and know? then and the same good, thing with the Owen Wilson good. character you're like okay you know where, where is this guy exactly what is, what is his deal is he yeah. a con artist is he a jerk uh, if he's that smart and, and likable, right. why is he just, you know, turned yeah. into a I, bomb on the street? So, I mean, too many elements at work. Yeah, right I think Wilson kind of got me through some of it, as you say. But I, I think, to also, this was way too much of a debt to Superbad with the three guys. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, Superbad kind of rules out this kind of picture. The great thing about Superbad is those three characters in that mm -hmm. don't have to deal with any kind of, like, sadistic bully nonsense because that belongs to a, an old genre. You know, yeah. that really felt like this year's stuff. And this feels like some weird hybrid of an 80s thing from Hughes and yeah. something that doesn't quite might work on it. Yeah, elements of movies like Some Kind of Wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Years ago. So, not quite. Yeah, not disappointment. Quite. I agree. Unexpectedly, though, this next film, better than Drillbit Taylor. You know okay. what I wasn't expecting from Adam Carolla, Jimmy Kimmel's old sidekick from The Man Show, and recent contestant on Dancing with the Stars? 
I wasn't expecting a warm-hearted romantic comedy. Mm. In The Hammer, Corolla plays an L.A. carpenter who's just turned 40 and just been dumped by his girlfriend. Years ago, Jerry was a promising amateur boxer. These days, he's coaching part-time at his local gym. Sparring with an Olympic hopeful, one day Jerry lands a knockout punch and ends up getting his own shot at the Olympic regionals. I'm taking a look at some prospects for the Olympic trials. No. Hold on, Coach, man, you want to give a 40-year-old black guy a shot? Yeah, Coach, when is the black man finally going to get a fair shake in the fight game? Here at a party thrown by co-worker Ozzy Castillo, Ozzy's fellow Nicaraguan nationals are skeptical about Jerry's chances. Nicaragua, Nicaragua, number uno, Nicaragua! You guys sure seem to love Nicaragua, except for the part where you risk your lives not to live there anymore. All right, one round, then you're going to bed. Now, without making a big deal about it, The Hammer takes place in a truly multicultural L.A. One of Jerry's pupils is a public defender, played by Heather Jurgensen. She's from the film Kissing Jessica Stein. Don't take too many shots to the face. Oh, that's inspirational. How about a little something like, I believe in you, Jerry? Oh, right. I believe in you, Jerry. How can I lose? I don't want to oversell the hammer, and some of the ethnic gags are fresher than others, but Corolla and Jurgensen are easy company. I was expecting one sort of movie, and I got another, a sweet little L.A. story. It's in limited theatrical release right now, and I will tell you when it comes out on DVD. I say see it, unexpectedly, but you, see it. You know what, Michael, I say see it as well. All right, uh, I right. like Adam Carolla, he has a certain, you know, hey Michael, I just kind of toss off all my lines like this. And I like him, I like it the character. For Bill Murray, you know? And you know, well, you know, it, it's funny because yeah. this has actually got elements of Stripes meets Rocky, I think, in right, a way. Right. Um, it, it, it reminded me of Artie Lang's Beer League and Jeff Garland's I Want Someone to Eat Cheese With. Small films That's featuring yeah. likable guys who are very funny, playing versions of themselves yep. and doing a really good job of it and a nice little script a better script than i expected yeah. a better story better supporting cast than yeah. i expected and as I think well i like this film quite think, a bit i think if a lot of his fans who sort of know him from the man show are going to go in expecting one thing they should probably just get adjusted right now for something that's actually much more of a date movie yeah. and and you know and, yeah, and but very funny and you know yeah, what and a nice feeling enough, for la in all but, yeah. the cases i mentioned too michael these guys are smart enough to stay within their zone you know right. so a very good comfort zone for adam so i think i think it's a terrific no little he film. shouldn't do what bill murray did and do a remake of the razor's edge right after this right yeah. i think he should probably stick with the, but he's good. He's got yeah. a good, good future as yeah, a leading man, film. I think. Just a reminder, you can go to atthemoviestv.com to watch more than 20 years of movie reviews, and now you can leave viewer feedback. That's right, and coming up next, Oscar winner Charlize she Theron is the producer and one of the stars of Sleepwalking. When a woman asks you how old she is, you think, what age does she want to be? And then you say that number. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my daughter to school. And you know what, then? Then I'm going to find us a wonderful place to live, okay? And I have a lot of options, by the way, okay? Thank you. Thanks for your help, but I don't need it. Sarah, let's go. Oscar winner Charlize Theron lends her clout as a producer and as an actress to a quietly effective film called Sleepwalking. This is one of those movies that looks like it was born for the festival circuit. It is almost achingly realistic with Theron playing Jolene, a single mom who's barely capable of taking care of herself, let alone her 12-year-old daughter. Today's the first day of the rest of your home life. Moving again? I could really start unpacking instead of sitting there and pretending to do your homework. I'm not pretending to do my homework. I'm pretending not to hate my life. That's Anna Sophia Robb as okay. Tara. She gives one of the best performances by a child God, actor in so recent fast. years. Nick Stahl is also excellent as Jolene's right little brother James, who has no idea what to do with Tara after Jolene runs off. Well, we need big names. You know, so we don't get caught. I'll be Nicole, and I want to be 13 years old. It's being 12 is stupid. And Dennis Hopper proves he can shed the indie godfather hipster persona and still give an authentic performance. He plays Jolene and James's father, who's a real tyrant. You know how to take care of him if he gets colic? And maybe you should ask me before you start shoving food in his mouth. It was my idea. I figured that. Sleepwalking moves at a deliberate pace. It's a film of mood, and I think the mood is perfectly captured. At times, yes, the symbolism is a little heavy-handed, and certain scenes play for an extra beat that I found unnecessary, 
but this is a small gritty triumph with a breakout performance from young Anna Sophia Robb. I think it's the kind of work Jodie Foster was doing at a similar age. I really like this film. I'm with you on the acting only. I think this really? whole movie is nothing but extra beats that just don't feel like a really? real authentic story. And I think despite, okay. you know, good acting from everybody, but Dennis Hopper, for me, single-handedly ruins this thing because it's the most kind of hammy, overscaled, non-authentic, rural character I've seen in a movie in years. Truly. Oh, Michael, no, no I, I think you're dead wrong on this. Yeah, he's a monster. Yeah, he's a horrible guy, but you see him in moments where he's just going about his business, and there are guys like that. I didn't think he's that doing this it was... in the still photograph, uh, not in the oh, movie. Oh, no, Michael, no, I think honestly. I think you're being really unfair to Dennis no. Hopper here. Yes, he can give those kinds of hammy performances. I don't think he's doing it here. I believed him as that guy who lives in isolation on that farm, having driven away no, every no, single no. thing and every single person in his life that he cares about, and we see why I think in, in right, almost right, right, right. excruciating detail. If the, if, the, if, the, if the film were a little less connected the dots and the plotting and it's very predictable and sort of the you know really? as these two really? siblings eventually get back to you the home and they deal with all the family really? secrets to me it's just warmed over was... you know it's the kind of indie that if you recommend it you're gonna spoil it for uh, people who should see something good like snow angels this, you know what this is something good it's maybe not as good as snow angels but I thought it really got the rhythms and the lives of these characters very well it had it had a knowledge of that lower middle working class uh, type of existence where if you lose a job in a couple of weeks you might be out of your apartment I thought good all teams. of that it got very very well good intentions well. and and good execution inert drama oh, okay wrong. later in the show I'll give you my three picks for three to see the three best movies in theaters right now and next Woody Harrelson and a host of real-life poker pros go high stakes in the grand how long you been working here Boom. we were married Jack. it is essential for me to kill something each day. I had some extra hand lotion up in my room. That was none other than legendary director Werner Herzog as a vicious German poker player in our next movie, The Grand. Basically, it's like one of those Christopher Guest comedies, particularly best in show. Dog show there, poker tournament here. It's a mock documentary about six finalists competing in a $10 million poker tournament. Woody Harrelson plays a hard luck Vegas player who needs the win to save his granddaddy's casino. Here, Harrelson explains to the camera what he's been doing with his time. If you can um, smoke it or drink it or inject it or snort it, I've done it. <laughs> oh! And uh, that are. really affects the mental faculties. Cheryl Hines and David Cross play sister and brother, both vying for the big money. Ray Romano is Hines' husband. Real-life poker champ Gabe Kaplan is probably the best thing in the picture is Hines' and Cross's father. Look, I'm don't not get a poker. Offended. I don't sell peanuts in the park. I don't need your money, Freddie. This is what I respect about you. I knew you would react this way, but don't react this way. Don't react this way. Don't pee in your own wetsuit. That's what I got to say to you. Don't pee in my own wetsuit. That, it's a saying that... What does that mean? Loose Welcome way. back, Cotter. You're also grateful Chris Parnell's around to liven things up as a poker nerd to beat all. Here, he and his mother, played by Estelle Harris, attempt a little social contact with Richard Kind, who plays an unlikely player to beat, a chump from Wisconsin. I can relate because I'm a chump from Wisconsin. <laughs> you could learn so much from him. Really? Like, like what? Well, he has a lot of wonderful tricks. One in particular. His first two cards, when they're matching color, you know, Nice. And and it's one uh, number after another. Sure. Well, he plays them and wins. Please, Ruth. Well, you do. Maintain a perimeter, Ruth. The director and co-writer Zach Penn gets all these folks together and then lets scene after scene drift into nothing. Penn's big all ticket right. paydays include Let's several adaptations of comic books. He helped write two of the X-Men <laughs> films as well as the upcoming Incredible Hulk. And maybe this sort of comedy in the grand is just not in this guy's deck. So, um, um, not for me. I'm with you, Michael. And, you know, I actually played in a charity poker tournament last year with Cheryl Hines and Ray Romano. So I think a lot of the actors here are poker fans. There's also a lot of recognizable poker pros. Why are you, so not, in the movie, Why are you not in the movie, though? Why are you not in the movie? Well, you know, because, because, I, I, because I have to tell everyone what a disappointment this movie <laughs> is. Because even though you have people who obviously know about poker, it doesn't really play true to form to no. the drama you see on shows like Poker After Dark or High Stakes Poker, real real life poker shows right. where there is some good drama there. And the comedy, there's a lot of material there in the poker world that is ripe for satire, but it, it misses the boat yeah, here almost always. I would, All I, these talented, yeah, funny people. I know, it's heartbreaking. I, would, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of inherent drama personally in watching other people play poker, but, you know, the, here the, also the director well, said 90%, uh, that's your opinion, pal. Mine and Nine, millions of others. 90% of this film, according to the director, was improvised, and he just 
just yeah, think that's that's a, that's a bigger ratio than Guest allows his actors in Best in Show. Exactly. I know. And those Too guys much. and those guys are all all stars. The Christopher Guest Company at Improvisation, right. and some of the people who are really are really funny, and yeah, others Gabe aren't. Gabe Kaplan, my favorite thing, uneven. and, yes. and he's, the, he's trying least hard to be funny. Yeah, it's a, it's a real disappointment. Yeah. Okay, next is a movie that I don't think disappoints at all. In fact, I liked it quite a bit. It's called Under the Same Moon, and it's maybe the most sentimental movie you're ever going to see about illegal immigration. One of the most emotionally and politically charged issues of our time is given such a warm-hearted and involving treatment that even Sean Hannity might be moved to tears. Well, maybe not. I couldn't help but get choked up myself as I rooted for a determined nine-year-old named Carlitos to find his way from Mexico to Los Angeles. His mother, Rosario, has been in L.A. for four years. That's Adrian Alonso in a winning and natural performance as Carlitos and Kate Del Castillo as his mom. America Ferrara from Ugly Betty plays a young American woman offering to transport children across the border. We can take babies across. Sorry, no business. No, wait, did you tell her? Did she understand? As Rosario considers a marriage to a handsome security guard that will give her legal status, Carlitos makes the perilous journey from Mexico to Texas to Arizona and finally to California. After an INS raid, he's left in the care of the surly Enrique, who at first wants nothing to do with this kid, but they eventually forge a father-son relationship that takes a number of surprising and heartwarming turns. Under the Same Moon is a beautifully rendered tale that doesn't shy away from its political views, but at heart, it's the story of a mother and child reunion, and I thought it was very well done. Yeah, I think it's moving almost despite itself, because you know, I don't even know if you believe much of the journey, but by the end, you really are moved to see these, these two get back together again. And that's not really a spoiler, because that's, that's really where the movie's going from real one. But I do think you know, the acting carries it, mm -hmm. and it's a, good, it's a good story, because there's so many immigration stories in this country. Uh, yeah, some really fine performances yep, yep. here. Okay, coming up next, one of last year's scariest movies from a horror legend in our our video segment but first let's take a look at some of the movies we'll be reviewing over the next few weeks he doesn't even play why do we need him these are a lot like your plays only a little more effective so what do they call you quick smith <laughs> not quick enough if anybody here had a clue we wouldn't be here in the first place true all right, looking at movies new on DVD, I liked Wrist Cutters and The Kite Runner. I cannot recommend The Seeker, but my video pick this week is The Mist, which I found to be a surprisingly substantial horror film. Yeah, there's a lot of monsters and slimy creatures, but it also kind of reminded me of an old Twilight Zone episode where there's a danger lurking outside, but the people are turning on each other on the inside. It is these people who brought this upon us. They people who refuse to bend to the will of God and claim it privilege. And Michael, forget about Dennis Hopper. You want to talk about a great, hammy, over-the-top performance. I love Marsha Gay Harden in this 150%. film. 150 percent. You know, I like that film a lot. And the people that hate the ending, hate the ending. Yeah. But I, you yeah. know, even so, we're seeing. Yes. Crime keeps on paying, and the Warner Brothers Gangsters DVD box sets continue with this week's release of Volume 3. Mm. Humphrey Bogart in Black Legion, Edward G. Robinson in Brother Orchid, and check out this scene from a fascinating little-known 1933 melodrama called The Mayor of Hell. Jimmy Cagney is a racketeer who ends up commissioner of a reform school that's under the thumb of a sadistic administrator who gets his butt good. You think I built this racket up for seven years just to let you guys walk away with it? I'm telling you all something. You're through. And it's for you. In the same set, Cagney's in the films Lady Killer, Picture Snatcher, and co-starring with Edward G. Robinson, Smart Money. I say the smart money says buy it. And Michael, the film world is mourning the loss of Academy Award-winning director Anthony Minghella, who died unexpectedly last week at the age of 54. His most famous film was surely uh, The English Patient, but I'd also like to recommend Breaking and Entering, which was actually on my list of the top films of 2006. Yeah, and truly, madly, deeply, an earlier film which doesn't have any epic scope, but it's a film about loss and grieving, and it's sort of perfect for this sad week. Yeah, absolutely. So all of Anthony Minghella's films, including the talented Mr. Ripley and other great films, are available now. And The Mist and the Warner Brothers Gangsters, Volume 3, will be in stores on Tuesday. And we'll be back with my picks for three to see, the best three movies in theaters right after this. Now it's time for three to see, where I give you my three favorite movies 
currently in theaters. At number three, who the fuck is The Hammer? <laughs> a surprisingly warm-hearted romantic comedy starring Adam Carolla. Number two, The Bank Job, a juicy, well-acted heist picture, old-fashioned in all the right ways. And number one, just because I like to close, <laughs> Miss, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day, a 1930s comedy starring Amy Adams and Francis McDormand. It starts out like a farce and ends up a moving story of friendship. Now, when you say like to close, you mean like as an admirer of the fashions, not that you'd like to wear and no, try correct. on some of Amy Adams' outfits no, from none, this movie. None, I just want to clarify no, that. I did, none of them fit. I like all three of your picks, and I agree about Miss, you know, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. It has such a dainty, fanciful title. It's a better movie than that. It's not it just, just a cutesy little thing. There's some interesting stuff yeah, going yeah, on good there. Actor. Good picks, my friend. All right, that's it for this week. Until next week, the balcony is closed. Everything's better with toppings, like new shortcake pancakes at IHOP. Fluffiness topped with decadence only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Oh boy, smelly shoes. No smell? Odor Eaters destroys odor, absorbs wetness. Odor Eaters insoles powder and spray. Net Zero gives you the fastest surfing available over dial-up and virus protection, starting at $9.95. Try it risk-free for 30 days with our money-back guarantee.